I buy a stock with the intention that me and that stock are going to the grave. <laughs> Hey there my handsome and pretty little cobras and welcome back to the cobra's nest for those of you who are new my name is Minion Cobra and I make minimalism videos Today's minimalism video is actually a video request and that's from one of my subscribers on my last video I think I was talking about passive income they said that they would really like to hear my take on stocks so I whipped it all up together and I'm going to be putting this out for you guys because I think that I had made stock videos in the past and no one was interested in watching it but I think maybe you guys might be a bit more interested now because I think you guys can see that I'm not bad with money <laughs> so this might help somebody else out who might be curious in, in buying stocks I think so I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks with you guys when it comes to buying buying stocks in the most simple way possible. This is actually my third time filming this. The first two times, I actually thought I wouldn't have enough to say because at least the idea of buying stocks seems quite simple to me. At the end of the month, I just log into my bank and I just buy stocks and that's it. It's nothing fancy or complicated. But when I filmed this, I was like, oh my God, I was talking and talking. It was like a 40 minute video. I'm gonna today keep it really, really simple and I'm not gonna be touching on anything complex. If there's more details that you guys wanna know, I'll film a part two. So today's video is gonna be like super, super simple. And I'm just gonna be talking about the three ways that I buy stocks. Okay, so three ways that you can buy stocks that I don't do. So the first one is you can day trade. That's too volatile for my liking and I don't like the gains in addition that the taxation is different for day trading. If you hold for less than a year, you're taxed differently and I'm just not about that. I don't want to pay more tax than I have to, so I don't do that. If you guys are more curious about that, you can definitely check out other people's channels. I don't do it and I never have and I probably never will, so I'm not going to talk about it. The second way is you can buy and sell short term. So this is like past the one year mark and I have done it once and I did it with Starbucks, but it was completely unintentional. I bought the stock at $50 because it had a dip because of like a political thing about like China buying the stock and a lot of people are like yeah but I live in China and, I, and Starbucks is really expensive in China so I bought it thinking you know what this is pretty good and it was four years later I sold the stock at a hundred dollars that is a short-term gain but I had not meant to sell it the only reason that I did was because it was the year 2020 and that's when I graduated and I had to pay back my student loan so I fully liquidated all of my stocks that included that Starbucks stock but that isn't a good example of a short-term sell and the third way that one can do stocks is holding for life or in the crypto world hodl and that is the way that i buy stock i buy a stock with the intention that me and that stock are going to the grave <laughs> So now I can get into talking about that because by the time I reached this part of the talk in my other videos, I was already at like 30 minutes. I was like, I'm not going to do that. There's actually a lot to cover with the way that I actually do stock. So I'm going to get into that. Okay, so number one, I buy companies that I trust. So I want to explain this because there's a lot of stocks out there. There's the S&P 500 and that's just like the top 500. There's so many more companies. For every listed company that's like a registered company, you could buy the stock of it. There's penny stocks, which is like more random companies just invented to be a vehicle for fast flipping of money so there's, there's a whole world of stocks out there and so I try not to be clever with this I just buy stocks that I understand and I think that this has probably been mentioned by other like really well-known stocks people I think like Warren Buffett is somebody that I try to learn a lot from I also try to learn from Rich Dad Poor Dad and actually the person who I've mostly modeled myself after actually is this Canadian his name is Derek Foster and he wrote The Idiot Millionaire and I'll put it here that's the book the formula that I follow he's Canadian and I just completely I just highlighted his book I think it's at my mom's house and I think my brother's reading it but that book was the one that that's the model that I follow and it's a really skinny easy read book and I'm gonna be telling you guys that I only buy companies that I trust and I don't even have a very complex a diversified portfolio a lot of people always talk about doing a diversified portfolio I don't do that and I think the tech lead said it well if you have a diverse if you have a diversified portfolio it just means that you don't know what you're doing and I have to say I agree with him i did buy more exotic stocks when i first started off i think i started back in like it's been so long i don't even know what year i started in i want to say i just remember i was in teacher's college so i think that was 2014 i bought more exotic exotic stocks i bought this and i bought that i don't even remember what they were I was still like testing it out but yeah in the end i just went with really basic stuff so i bought the majority currently i've just bought the majority of canadian banks it just makes sense everybody needs to bank for now you know crypto might change that but just generally speaking i feel like a lot of people still do use their bank for a lot of things so banks hydro the electricity water food grocery stores more posh stuff like your like iphone which is like apple your cars tesla anything that just like most people use on the daily that's understandable like if 
I told you, you know, McDonald's, you'd probably know what McDonald's is. I think that the way that Derek Foster explained it well was that we're just really brand driven, at least in our Western hemisphere. Nobody likes to buy the off brand if they have the choice not to. Like people like to buy, if you're feeling chocolatey, if you know, if you feel like eating a chocolate, you're most likely going to go for your favorite chocolate brand. You're not going to buy an off brand thinking that that's going to satisfy you. So that's why he thinks that companies that are branded thrive the best and have the best value for your money in terms of, you know, using it as a vehicle for wealth growing. So I just keep it real simple. My portfolio only has about 30 different companies, half of them just being the banks and the rest just utilities and then a couple fancy stocks like Tesla and Google and, and Apple and Facebook. Like that's it. I just pick winners. I just pick companies that I know are going to do amazing by the time I need to sell them when I'm like, you know, retired at like 60 or 70. Like when that time comes, I imagine that they would still be around. And a lot of these companies have been around, like Canadian banks have been around for 200 years, even during times of crisis, even during recessions, the government has bailed them out. So, I mean, in worst case scenarios, you know, I feel, I feel pretty safe. Okay, number two is looking at history dividend payout. So that's another thing that I look at, but I need a disclaimer this, and this is a long spiel that I had, unfortunately, you need to say it again. Just because a, a company has had previous history does not mean that it's guaranteed in the future that they're going to give you dividend payout. I mean, for the most part, generally speaking, they usually do, but it, it, it's worth noting that that's not actually the case. So just, I just want to disclaim that. And a good example I can give of that is like airline companies. A lot of them had to postpone the dividend payout in which it was like they had been doing for like decades and they had to put it on pause because of COVID. So everything is risky. Stocks are risky. Leaving your money behind in the bank to depreciate is risky. All of this is risk. It's just a matter of assessing your own risk and risk tolerance. Now that I have disclaimer that for the most part, if a company has been able to pay dividend in the past, it usually would be able to in the future. So, but that isn't to say that I also have not bought stocks that didn't do this. When I bought, initially bought, uh, Starbucks at the time, they didn't pay dividend. And one of the reasons that companies don't pay out dividend is because they're still growing. An example of that is Google. Google doesn't pay out dividend. They may never pay out dividends. It's like there's just so many unvariable, there's like so many unknowns and variables when it comes to stock. And that's why this video ended up so long the first time I filmed it. But I'm just generally speaking speaking of the general guidelines or rules that I use to help myself out. So I usually tend to prefer companies, if I can, that pay dividend. Like that's the bulk of my portfolio. And then I have some fancy stocks that have some growth that maybe in the future they may or they may not pay me out dividend. I'm not interested in that. I like the idea that, and this is going to bring me into my next point. I want to hold for life because I'm trying to buy the golden goose that lays eggs. The idea is, at least for myself, and this is a model that I followed after Derek Foster, you could retire off dividend. But don't be thinking that the dividend ratio is like, I just had them a hundred bucks and they're gonna be paying me out, you know, 50 bucks a month. That's not how it works. An example that I can give to illustrate this point, there's this one Canadian YouTuber that I follow and he showed his portfolio and he made passively with dividend from his stocks. Also the majority being Canadian banks. Like he had like a million dollars invested to be able to get 3000 passively like on a month of dividend. And I was like, that that's how it's going to be, huh? <laughs> so to kind of give you guys an idea, I'm not going to say how much I have invested, but on average, I've managed to get myself up to about a, a little bit under a hundred dollars a month in dividends. Nothing to write home about. I mean, I'm not, I'm not being ungrateful. I'm really appreciative of that. That definitely helps out with rent. But it's just to kind of illustrate this idea that, uh, that that wouldn't be possible if I was busy day trading, you know, selling a stock here, selling a stock there, paying taxes on my capital gains or deducting for my capital losses. It is just such a headache and I just don't see the point. A lot of graphs have shown that over the long term, you know, when in doubt, zoom out, you just, you win more when you just hold the stock. It just increases in value if you have chosen proper winning stocks. I mean, I'm not saying that my stocks are winners, you know, I, I just buy companies that I believe in and I think that's the best business model out there. It's supposed to be a capital society. So if they perform well, they should last long. Yeah, and honestly, I just keep it real simple. When I buy a stock, I like to think that I'm gonna hold it for life. I don't plan to sell them, but again, you can never say never. I mean, I didn't think that I was gonna sell my stock when I graduated. I really did think, and I had hoped and I had pushed that my stocks would be enough to cover the interest and pay off my student loans for me. Turns out that that wasn't the case, so I had to make that executive decision to liquidate all of my stock to pay off my loans. But with the exception of that, I plan to, hold my stocks for the rest of my life and 
just enjoy that beautiful passive dividend because the thing is this considered compounding interest and albert einstein has famously said i don't remember the quote i'm not going to butcher i'm just going to put it here but essentially compounding interest is what dividend is when you buy the stock you take a part of that dividend you reinvest it and it, you just keep doing that compounding interest in the beginning i heard like the first 100k is the most difficult part and then after that it's just like it's just like it's just like stupid money it just it, the ball just gets rolling so i just i always comfort myself with that to just keep going i just hold the stock buy in there's also this dollar cost average idea because a lot of people are like but stocks are just getting so much more expensive if you had only bought x and y stock back in you know this and this year you'd have this and this much money there's there's no going back in time there's a lot of stocks that i wanted to buy when i was looking at stocks like louis vuitton um, I wanted to buy that stock back when it was only like two hundred dollars, four hundred something, or eight hundred something now, but I can't go back in time. I didn't have the money then, so all you can do is start today because you can't go back in time. So that's where this dollar cost average comes in. You actually win when you buy in throughout the years. I think somebody ran a study. I can't find. I don't know if I'll be able to find it, but it was they were comparing two people: somebody who bought in early and just held versus somebody who dollar cost average actually came out ahead. So don't don't feel bad if you feel like you're late to the party you're not late to the party you're you're where you're supposed to be and better today because if you don't even start today then a hundred percent you're gonna have zero invested dollars in the future this is a much better video than the initial videos that i had filmed if you guys want more details on anything in particular comment it down below and i'll do my best to address it and i hope that this video helped out anybody i tried my best to keep it as practical as possible if I just, I just want the best for you guys because buying stocks has really made my life that much better and if it could help out somebody else out, that would be awesome. I just want to disclaim this, I'm not a financial advisor, please do your own research, but you know what, I think everybody deserves to eat, so why don't we just eat together? Alright, so thank you so much for having taken the time to watch and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye! Zero dollars in the future. Um, 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 and doing these things. So anyway and tolerance were um 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 uh buy companies that you trust or buy or um so and i was like i need to uh i think i the uh, i think i have enough of a platform now that people might actually listen to what i have to say i'm not past videos in the